What's good? Great Friday morning, everybody. Great Friday morning. Hope everybody is doing amazing this far. Just gonna finish getting everything set up right quick. Bear with me. Igor, Patrick, what's good with it? Welcome, welcome. Daniel Harding, what's good with it? Good morning. Welcome, welcome try and have a good Friday here if we're not gonna have a uh, if we're not gonna have a winning trade we at least gonna have a uh, some winning vibes here hell yeah Daniel get that workout in crush that workout man I just I just finished mine freaking got that work in man I'm feeling good get some goddamn sports center on here you know check it out see what see what everything's looking like man i was watching some of them games last night man the, the damn the celtics man they pulled out a big win out of nowhere big comeback over uh, the warriors for, for any of y'all that watch the nba you know we got a lot of foreigners that hop in here so probably not <laughs> JM Speedy, what's good with it? How's it going? Let's see. Looks like gold's uh, currently in a little range here. Looks like we have some nice moves though. Asian session and shit. Asian session brought some nice moves. What was this? All this yesterday, yeah. This was a trade we took yesterday, so um, I don't know if you guys uh, if you guys remember this, but this is um, you know the the trade that I took yesterday, a losing trade analysis ended up playing out. My entry right here is just a little too short. Should have waited for either a volatile candle like this to happen or the break and close outside of the range. But in this case, it was the volatile candle, so we we're not gonna forget that one because. You know the beautiful thing about that is everything made sense we were just a little too early on the entry damn looking at the telegram chat man a lot of people had some winning trades so far it's like gold make, might make a little push down here not a criteria for me for the uh for the entry though <laughs> Oh, 
uh, to see the messages about some analysis and all that good stuff more than happy to as always just bear with me one second let me get uh let me get everything set up here And gold looks like it's gonna uh, it's gonna give us a quick uh, quick ten pips or something right here. <laughs> if you look at this too, this actually looks pretty solid because if you look at the thirty minute candles, obviously this is breaking a low. This previous one was kind of like that volatile candle situation it broke the highs and the lows and then if you look at it the hourly is doing the same thing it's about to take out that hourly low the problem is the challenge is, is the range right here isn't really too too large but looks pretty solid nonetheless I still got to uh, finish that up <laughs> This Trevetsky person, whoever that is, if you're on here, if you're on the damn YouTube, as soon as I send a damn link, it's always like, you got a Zoom link? Shit, man. One second, one second. Gotta get set up. I think, um, like I said, I think like I see some people messaging about this, about this gold move. I think this is this looks pretty good for like a breakout, the impulse entry. Yeah, Marjan, I know, I know, but you got to be patient so I can get get everything set up and then I can send the link. can only do one thing at a time. <laughs> as much as I want to be a superhero, I can only do but so much. Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's do our uh, let's do our level analysis here. So the daily candle is currently bearish. Um, we did break the highs, but nonetheless, currently bearish. So not going to consider buys until we come up above this 1932.26 level. And if we jump to the 30 minute time frame, we can see that we're in like a little range here. So honestly, buys really aren't going to look good. Yeah, until we like come up above here. Um. Yeah, we'll um we'll 
find the buy criteria here in a second. above the closure probably probably can't look for cells until Yeah, I um, wouldn't look for sales until we start coming down here below 1926.35 or so. Um, there is like, obviously this is more of a, a tighter range, but the target to the downside isn't large enough. You know, it's only about 18, 19 pips. I'd probably like to see a little bit more. a little bit more there because we got about 29 pips or so coming down here so I think that's gonna make more sense yeah I think that's gonna make more sense and let's try and figure out what the buy criteria would be um, Patrick, Mike, could you please look on G on daily, weekly time frame? Do you see opportunity for a swing there? Um, Patrick, that's not um, that's not a pair that I trade, um, and I also don't swing things based off of higher time frames like that. So, if you want to send an analysis, if you want to send your chart, I'd be more than happy to uh, to check it out. But it's not um, not quite how I trade. So I don't know that my analysis is going to be beneficial to you, but I'd be more than happy to check out your analysis and give you my feedback. Perfect. All right, so this is going to be the uh, the analysis here on gold for today. I honestly might not really look for an opportunity. We'll have to see, though, just kind of how things are playing out. Um, but it's been a good week thus far. I've, only, I've had one loss. Um, you know, Fridays are can be kind of tricky sometimes. So we, we shall see. I did like how, how gold was moving here for a second, but it doesn't look like it's gonna be right, you know. So I was like, like I was looking at this as like it would be a, a, po a potential impulse entry, impulse situation. Essentially, like at, because you know, if we look at it, like we broke the highs here, we kind of broke the lows here, like just barely. Um, but the bigger thing that I was kind of looking at was the impulse situation that we could have potentially had based on um, based on the one hour here where we broke the highs already and we broke the lows the problem is it's just not enough range down to the this next zone here but it looks good I mean you know the, that would be the four hour you know making this bearish move down this previous one has a huge rejection so to me this is a rejection not a wick fill because it failed to close above this 1932 area but um but yeah so we'll have to see i just think it would be it would be smarter it would be better below here below this uh this 1926 area um by the way patrick if you um if you're gonna send a chart you have to come up here to the camera icon thing do copy a link to chart image 
and when you go to paste it you can paste it but the only thing that you can send is this right here this part that I've highlighted that's the only thing that you can send for some reason um, YouTube will block like the full link so just keep that in mind all right let's check out GJ it looks like GJ is making a little bullish move here current daily candle bullish so it looks like buys would be favored let's check it out shall we Hi hey Mike, how are you? Hey, what's up brother, how are you doing? I'm good. I did my analysis on gold. I sent it over to your telegram. Awesome. Okay. Sells below, yeah, so that's probably what I wouldn't consider sells until GJ can can come down below this level here. And then it looks like we probably have a nice range here. Yeah, 24 pips, not too bad. Not too bad. Now for buys, we really just need a resistance to form. And then once a resistance forms, we can either have a potential slingshot situation for a continuation or we can retrace back down to potentially this 159 908 level we have a little MP special setup we go target these highs that it's creating so the waiting game on uh, on GJ there the main thing is is just gotta wait for gotta wait for uh, a resistance to form that's gonna be the first course of action Daily candle is bearish on the 30 minute. If we break below 1928, we have good range, about 20 pips to the downside. Yeah, I was looking at this. Um, I was looking at this too as a potential. Um, it's just, it's. I think it would be better to wait for a price to come down below this 1926.31 because we have a lot of rejections here. If price does close below the 1928 level that's obviously going to give us a little bit better confirmation that we could move down to the bottom of this this range and and test this level here um, but being that we have like these strong rejections like that I'm I'm thinking it looks better below this 1926.31 because this is like a clean candle that moved through this area and there's no like crazy wicks in this zone if that makes sense so um, so yeah I mean I do agree but I think the better entry would be below 1926.35. Ah, okay, good. So, I mean, I, I, like, I definitely think it's valid. And to be completely honest, <laughs> I took the impulse entry off of the hourly break of the low. Um, uh, so I, I executed it based on the 30 minute, and anticipating the hourly was going to break the low, but. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's like, and that was honestly like I jumped into that, like just looking at it really fast, but I didn't like pay attention to the fact that it was like only 18 to 19 pips. So I was like, after I opened it, I was like, oh fuck. So I'm going to put that in my, uh, in my notes to like not do that. <laughs> and it's funny because in my trading plan, I literally have a rule that's like, don't trade within the first 30 minutes of being on the charts because... You know, you want to make sure you, you absolutely understand what's happening currently. And I just like saw that setting up on the hourly and 30 minute and the four hour. And, I, and then I knew that the, the, the daily was bearish. I was like, ah, oh, shit, okay. 
I take that entry. But that's um now now I'm like starting to understand too like how Raja has gotten to his level because like when you when you have profits to play with you start to you start to get a little bit more free on taking the entries because you know you have something that you can risk. So I just took a I actually just took a a, a quarter percent of a risk there. So very 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 small position. Let, let me look at the lot size. Usually I'm risking about $500 per trade. I only risk $125 on that, but I just want to execute on it. Yeah, it was a, <laughs> a <laughs> it was like a point, point oh 0.08. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. But let me just explain real quick why why I took that just for just for future reference too. But like I said, I mean, it was it was kind of a it was kind of a dumbass thing to do just because it was so impulse. Um, it was like a FOMO thing. But let me just um, let me pull this up. So like like I was saying when I first opened up the stream, this previous 30 minute candle obviously broke the high and rejected and closed strong bearish. And if you look at it, you know, you can you can look to see that it kind of broke the low. You know, it wasn't like a strong break. Like if you were looking at this on your on your uh, on your MT5 platform, watching it actually break, it probably wouldn't have broke um, broke the the low like based on the spread. You know, the candle the the candle wick might have just barely broke it, but I, I doubt the spread would have broken it. And like I've mentioned before, I, I like to see the spread break the lows because to me that's like that that's the the candle is breaking the low by like one to two pips if the spreads breaking the low which in my mind I would rather have a entry that's like one to two pips later um, to have a stronger confirmation like hey we actually did like strongly break the lows you know I have a I have a better confirmation that's gonna continue so I was basically just looking at it like alright cool we wicked up and then the second half of this 30 minute candle we started to break the lows so the probability of the candle being bullish after you know it's bearish in the second half of the the, the 30 minute candle you know it's a, a little bit lower probability that it's going to flip up and go break the highs still potential but whatever um then i flipped over to uh the hourly here the hourly here and i was just seeing like okay this is that impulse situation that we were talking about where the highs were broken now the lows are broken if you look at the hourly time this was like you know with 15 minutes left in the hourly candle so what's the probability it's going to retrace and go break its own high pretty low um and then the four hour candle this is obviously a, a very beautiful counter trend slingshot setup that um that i often trade on lower time frames so it's like perfect if um if you know it's just anticipation that this candle right here is going to form oh sorry anticipation that this candle here is going to continue bearish break these lows and do like a little wick fill situation and end up printing something like that and there's two hours left in the four hour candle so the probability of that happening obviously very high and I look at this uh, this this candle right here as a rejection candle not a wick fill candle because we failed to close above this this level and so what that means in my opinion is that we should rec respect this four hour candles high We've already made like this top wick situation so it, could, it should continue bearish here and then obviously just like the home run driving point mm -hmm. is only really looking at sells uh, at this point because daily candles bearish I want to trade in that direction um, so yeah that's just kind of it but let me um let me just kind of um put this on here just so you can see what what it all looked like too Igor what's good, Mike? oh what's good with it Jake how's it going all good bro all good oh hell yeah yeah I was just looking at that man when I when I opened up the charts I was like damn man this thing moved nice overnight yeah I took I took profit quite early but I think because I've had quite a few losing trades this year I just wanted to secure early to try and build that confidence back looking at it obviously you look at it in retrospect and you can kind of think oh yeah if I held my runner until now and then you look at it and it's gone to the moon but I think I'm happy with the, the win so 
take, take that for Friday in and out. Hell yeah, man. That's I'm always like that, man. Anytime, any anytime I see candle move, you know, 100 pips or something, and I only caught 10, I'm like, shit, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't care. Well done, Jay. You'd be happy with that. Yeah. Thank exactly. You. And, uh, given my uh, given my track record this year, oh, <laughs> super happy. But, um, do you know what it was? It, I think weirdly, I. I got better sleep last night and I think it gave me a bit more clarity on reading the charts. I think sometimes when I get up so early with not sleeping very well, I do, I do tend to make more mistakes, I think, because I'm not thinking right. I don't know if anyone else thinks that. I don't know if you guys, I don't know how early you guys trade for you, where you're based, but for me, it's massive. Yeah, I mean, I would agree with that 100%. I mean, like, um, I mean, I, I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty, like, bad when it comes to sleep and all that type of shit. I mean, the last couple of days, I've probably, like, the last three days, <laughs> I've probably slept, like, I don't know, 10 hours, you know, it's, it's terrible. But, um, but to your point, though, Jake, is, like, when I trade, it's first thing in the morning, you know, I get a workout in, you know, I'm, I'm like wide awake, you know, I'm like fired up, you know, I got good energy at this time. So, so like I, my thought process a little is a little bit more clear. Whereas like as time gets, you know, th further throughout the day, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., you know, I can feel myself starting to get a little bit tired and, uh, you know, the mental clarity really isn't there. So, yeah, you're exactly right. There's a dude, um, if you guys uh, are on Instagram, there's a dude, Wes Watson, and, um, He's pretty insane. He's a pretty intense guy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, like he's uh, he went to prison for like 10 years, got out like five years ago, and he's like multi-millionaire now. Like he's absolutely crushing it. He's got an amazing story. Has a really really good book called uh, Non-Negotiable by Wes Watson. And um, anyways, long story short, he always talks about this because one of his like non-negotiables is waking up at 2:45 a.m. And it sounds like retarded, you know, but, um, but anyways, like my, my point of like saying this is, um, you know, he talks about the fact that like the mental clarity is just so much higher, um, at that early time because he doesn't have the distractions, but at the same time, cause he wakes up, he gets straight into a workout and then he does like some really deep focus work for a couple of hours. And then he just has the rest of the day to do what he wants, take a nap or whatever. But, um, but basically what I'm, what I'm getting to, uh, Jake is like, you know, he talks about like, you know, sleep just being like one of those situations where it's like, you know, I get what I can get because I got like shit to do. But at the same time, I focus my attention towards, you know, my my most important task towards the earlier times of the day and right after I work out because that's when I'm stimulated. And he's like, anytime I feel tired throughout the day, I'll hit like, you know, a hundred burpees and I'll get that stimulation back and I'll be able to work for a couple of more hours, things like that. Mm -hmm. But he's an intense motherfucker, but, <laughs> but, um, but if you can, if you can like think about that, you know, like if you're trading, you know, like a uh, London open and, um, you know, you know, your priority is London session, you're probably waking up closer to that time. Whereas New York session is getting a little bit later into your day, you know, so, you know, your energy is starting to decline. You've already exhausted some of that, uh, that mental clarity with other work tasks or whatever it might be, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, that, that could be like the, the correlation, you know what I mean? Definitely, man. Yeah. yeah like this, this morning, morning I woke up and I instantly knew I had a better sleep than the last, last three, three or four nights. And, and you just, just, I just felt the extra clarity I had and patience, patience as well. well. The last few days, I think when I, if I, I usually get about five hours, but last night I got six to seven because I went to bed a bit earlier and, uh, I noticed, I noticed and it, it did play out. out. Not, Not like it had, had a huge overall impact on probably me finding a successful trade. The charts also, also present stuff, stuff that I like, but it, um, it, it definitely did help me sort of identify the trade, I think. Yeah, 100%. 100%. That's Hi, it. Mike, I have a question. Yeah, man. You see where you have your resistance at 1926.35, where I also drew mine? But, but you have written cells below into brackets closure. closure. Uh, when, when that candle goes below, we wait for it to close, then, then you enter, or you just enter when it's breaking that low, that support. Um, I would wait for it to close. Um, to be honest with you, 
um, mm-hmm. because it's you know we're we're probably not gonna get a situation where we're gonna get a volatile candle um, like we were we were you know talking about with previous ranges. Um, so yeah, I mean I would probably wait for it to close just to be safe, but I don't know. Uh, because this this four hour here, this actually looks pretty good. Because if it does go break these lows, this is like the four hour candle low here. But if that's the situation, you know, you would probably wanna you would wanna have stops like above the four hour candle, so it'd be pretty large, 55 pips or so. So yeah, I would probably I would wait for that extra confirmation and probably just have candle close, and that would make me a little bit more comfortable, I think. Oh, oh okay, nice. nice. But yeah, I mean, if, if, if it looks, if something appears like where I would take an impulse entry, I will explain, I'll explain it to you just so you can kind of see what I mean. Um, but with the way, cause like I've seen Raja do things like this and you know, it plays out, but sometimes it doesn't, you know, sometimes it'll come break these lows and it'll reject. And what it's doing right now is kind of why I said like, after I took this, this entry here, it wasn't necessarily the smartest thing because it was only like 18 pips or so to the bottom of this range and so um you know the probability of catching 10 pips in an 18 pip range is not the same as catching 10 pips in a 50 pip range you know so that's why i like to trade those bigger ranges it's not because i'm expecting to catch the entire range it's because i'm I, the probability of me being able to secure 10 pips is much higher in a larger range um, so it's kind of proving because of, of this rejection here but this green line, I put this this green line here. I'm gonna change the color just so we don't get confused with the um, with the other ones. But that's that's just where I closed everything after I um, after I realized the range wasn't as big and it was kind of like a FOMO impulse dumbass trade <laughs> that luckily played out for me. Um, I just set the full TP at 10 pips because I was like, oh, I don't I don't really like this, so I need to uh, get out. Yeah, we're gonna call that a risky FOMO impulse entry. <laughs> oh, hey Patrick, um, are you still here? Patrick in the uh, in the in the YouTube. Let me know if you're still here, man. If you're still here, I'll um I'll look at that um that GU now that I have my analysis and we don't have any other charts to look at, I'll pull it up and I'll um get my thoughts. Oh, what's this Tofu Jews? I think this name Desi Traders is perfect. Awesome. Yeah, if Desi Traders is perfect, you know you can go hop on their stream. Starting to uh, to so show some signs of uh, some rejection, so maybe we can get that that resistance. This actually looks really good. I honestly love when 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 uh, pairs do this when they move like really clean like this. To me, this this is creating really clean range. You know, a lot of times people will look at this and they're like, ah, shit. You know, I missed a trade. You know, but to me, this is setting up for the perfect the perfect MP special, you know, the perfect slingshot setup. So it's like, you know, it's going to create something that's going to make a lot of sense to execute on. 
let's see. I think GJ, if it close 160, 814 above, will be 50 pitch range clean. 160.814. Yeah, I mean, it all depends on how it closes up here, in my opinion. I mean, when candles are moving like this, like, it's not in a range, you know? So you have to, in my opinion, you have to let it create a range. Mohammed, I'm not saying that I, uh, degree, I disagree with what you're saying. I'm more, I'm more so just saying that, um, you know, I think that, um, you know, it needs to create a range. And for it to create a range, we need a resistance of form price to pull back and then that's going to show okay cool now we have a new range that we can we can trade we can go retest the highs or if it creates a resistance right at 8 a14 like you're talking about then maybe we can get a bearish candle to create a, a resistance there and the next one can be a bullish candle and then that would be a slingshot and marjan uh, a slingshot entry by the way i don't know if you guys knew this um Let's on my YouTube channel. I'm gonna take a second to load here. But once it does. Uh oh. But a deputy got a DUI. Naughty naughty. <laughs> on my YouTube channel here can see we have 733 subscribers no, I'm just kidding <laughs> um, <laughs> if you go to videos I have this video how to identify where to enter a trade actually what you should probably do is go to playlist and you can go to Forex right here if you go to Forex right here Let me move this out of the way. We have this. This is great. Um, Forex trading for beginners. This is great. How to identify tradable ranges. This is great. But how to identify where to enter a trade is the winner, winner chicken dinner presentation here. This is a little webinar that I created showing entries and you know, would I identify as a breakout? Would I identify as a slingshot move? Would I identify as a, uh, a MP special and stuff like that? So check out this video right here, Forex, how to identify where to enter a trade. And I think that will answer a lot of your questions. And I will copy this and I will paste this. Just so you can understand but nonetheless let me explain also what i'm what i'm uh talking about here as far as um gj so let's say we have you know a nice bullish move up to would you say 160.814 so probably like right here you know we have nice nice bullish candle nice strong bullish candle you know a gladiator candle i would like to call it and then we have you know something like this you know uh, a nice bearish candle that's that's confirming that we have a nice uh we have a nice resistance here you know perfect we now have resistance and now we have a tradable range we have a high created and we can either pull back to uh, then go retest the highs or we can do this right here which would consider which would be considered a slingshot entry where it you know it opens it goes and breaks a high and it has like some sort of bottom wick like this that's a slingshot move right there and if you think about this the reason i call it a slingshot move is because you know we had a very strong push up whoops let me uh change the color of that so we can see it we had a very strong push up we formed a level of resistance here. We had a little pullback, and that pullback is just enough for uh, just enough fuel, just enough gas for us to continue to launch up. So that's why I call it a slingshot. Now, the other situation that I'm talking about that, that I'm referring to 
is let's see is we have that resistance form whoops not what I wanted to do we had that resistance form right here now we have price pull back let's be a little bit more re realistic it's probably not going to do it all in one candle but you know price can pull back something like this and then boom form a, form a level of support here boom go retest these highs this is an MP special and that's that's why this is labeled MP special buys above MP special because all we need is resistance support and price to pull back then we can go retest the highs so voila hope that helps Igor um, check GJ it is doing that on 15 minute like three to four times a day yeah yes sir yes sir yeah 15 minutes on my friend though for some reason um, a lot of my losses have come on the 15 minute but yep slingshot 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 nice MP special here yep 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 looks really good there actually and that's actually um, a good point there Igor um, you know uh, you, you you made a good point here so when when price action is just galloping you know it's just moving very strong in one direction you know sometimes that's what you got to do is you got to go to lower time frames to see where you can catch an entry and um, a lot of times you know we'll do things like that in, in news events price is moving very strong candles are very large price is moving very fast and um, you know we got to look for for different time frames to catch that entry so thanks for uh, bringing that up Igor um... Uh, yeah, Mohammed, perfect. Yeah, it's the same thing that I was uh, just kind of explaining then. So perfect, perfect, perfect. Price moving a little slow here. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I got lucky with that trade. I got lucky it played out. That's um not something I wanna execute on in the future. Ugh. If the range was bigger I would, but the range the way it was, no.
quiet today. Everybody caught all their trades. London session was amazing, I guess. tired today the uh, the lack of sleep is um, catching up to me like it usually does on on Friday usually by like damn Saturday Sunday I'm sleeping for like 10 hours a day <laughs> got a lot of shit going on during the week though
Yeah, Igor, I just saw your chart there in, uh, in the chat. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, I'm going to pull this up right here real quick. Let me see. Where is it at? Where is it at? I like the explanation the most. The most. That's why I'm uh, sending this in. Or that's why I want to pull this up. So check this out. Since the 15-minute candle broke the low of the previous 15-minute candle, took liquidity, then also broke the high, I entered the trade, stop loss at 159.923, got 17 pips after that, put the stop loss at break even, and let the runner run. Yeah, I think that's um, I think that's really good. The only thing with this is uh, the the placement of the stop loss. You know, to me, it's not really valid, to be honest, but um. But I see why you put it there. You know, like this is a, a resistance here, or you know, a resistance support level. This candle already like retested it. So if price is gonna come all the way back down here, and after it already did this huge liquidity grab, you know, it's probably gonna invalidate the trade. But at the same time, you know, it's uh, it's in my opinion not the most valid stop loss. But I see why it's there. <laughs> But um, but nonetheless, I mean the the entry, like the reason that you took it here, I mean it makes a lot of sense. Very volatile candle, definitely was in a position to give you that nice push, just like you caught. So, good work there, big dog. See, and now, um, you know, now we got this damn bullish candle there on the 30 minutes, not looking too hot for it to continue downwards. So that's exactly why I said, you know, trading this, this small range was not ideal. And honestly, if I would have paid attention to that before I took that entry, before I took that FOMO entry, I wouldn't have taken it. <laughs> But it's all good because uh, we were able to secure, so it's all good. I got lucky. The Forex gods were like, no, Mike, we don't want to punish you today. You'll just realize the lesson and you won't do it again. But the next time, I'm going to punish you. And I was like, yes, sir. Sir, yes, sir.
Mohammed DJ 30 minute it is headed heading strong resistance if it break I think a nice buy what do you think DJ 30 minute it is heading strong resistance I don't know. I don't. I don't get what you're saying here. I don't see any resistance. And the, oh, you're probably talking about the history. Oh yeah, the past. Yeah. Um, I would not take a buy at all. You know, this is nice that this is here. But I mean, shit, man. We got one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine closed bullish candles here. You know, so what's the probability that you know we're gonna get another bullish candle? You know, eventually we're gonna get a bearish candle in here somewhere, and like you don't want to be a part of that. So the better confirmation, in my opinion, is like I said earlier. You know, like I was showing either the pullback to go retest the highs or a slingshot situation to continue but just because candles are moving bullish through a resistance that doesn't give me a confirmation um you know to enter because this this is the history you know this is the past this is the present so we want to focus on what's what's happening in the present what's happening right here right now so that's that's what i would focus on i will wait for that resistance to form and then a potential, uh, you know, slingshot setup or the uh, retest of the highs if we get a pullback all the way down here. Those are the two things that I will wait for. Um, another thing is, is also like I said, you know, the amount of bullish candles. We're, you know, we have a higher probability to have a bearish candle come in play here soon, at some point. Um, but on the other side too, um, we also have a situation of. Price has moved, let's see how far it's moved. It's moved 150 pips from the resistance. I mean, from the support, clean. You know, 150 pips, no no signs of retrace. So the further that price moves from a, a support or resistance level, the higher probability that you have a chance to get a retracement of some sort. So I keep that in mind. Hey man, what's up? What's up, Sartaz? How you doing? Uh, you catch these buys? Uh, bro, I bought GJ from 157,900 yesterday. Nice. And today also bought from this 159,460. Nice. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. So you caught know. the entry like here? Yeah. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's very. You know, beautiful. you know why why I hold uh, and I anticipate because of uh, daily daily candle. I I thought maybe it will uh, fill the week. You can see the daily candle. Daily candle. It will fill the gap. It will fill the week. Yeah, I was looking at this um this earlier. It's got a nice yeah a nice yeah, shot man. set up anyways. Yeah, yesterday Raja bro also bought from uh, those levels, man. 150 lots, 150 to 125 lots. <laughs> I know. And I he know. has runner. <laughs> yeah, I saw so he, he much caught runner, it like right here. Yeah, 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 from from yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because you know, we have uh, one pattern here. First of all, bullish candle, then a uh, small blue bearish candle, and break the both the candle. It means. Uh, Two candle retracement uh, pattern we have. Yeah, it looks um, yeah, there's some clean moves here on GJ the last two days. Yeah. No, I think it can go till 161 to 100. I think, man, it can fill all the, all the picks. Yeah. In one hour. You catch any move, man? I I I apply for gold man yesterday. Oh, holy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I um, I took like a kind of like a FOMO <clears throat> impulse trade here. It, it ended up playing out. I secured everything like right at 1927. But you know, like I um, 
when I was looking at it, I was basically just, well, to be honest, like I was just looking to target this area. Here. Yeah, 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 I am, I am waiting, I am waiting for this level, man. If, if it will break this uh, support, then it can go continue. Just I am waiting for NY. Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I, it, it's got a break and close below here. Yeah, you know, bro. Yesterday you put the stop loss below the candle. Yeah, I I put the stop loss below four hour candle. Okay, then I did not stop out. And oh yeah. Yesterday same trade. We have same trade yesterday. But yeah. no problem, bro. Where was that? That was. Oh yeah, it was here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was seven, seven <clears> thirty. <throat> Yesterday, many, many people saw gold, man, from 19, 23. They anticipated it can go till 1914, but <laughs> they have stopped out. Everyone has stopped out. <clears throat> yeah, I noticed um, if you anticipate anything with gold, you're likely going to be screwed. <laughs> and, yeah, yeah, that's why, bro, you know, I never trade after NYSE. Yeah. After NYSE, man, I never never ever trade if i have runner then i leave it that's it yeah it does start to get a little wacky with uh new york open nyse open <laughs> yeah um from monday man i will start live streaming on london yeah how's it going today i was busy man today i was busy yesterday oh, also okay. busy yeah, because what's that? That's in the morning for you? Mm, yeah, yeah, morning and I, I, I was in bank. Mm. Yeah, that's how that's how my days are becoming. About 9 a.m. or so, it's uh, it's getting a little busy. <laughs> yeah, it's your it's your time and same time for me, man. Yeah. That time was so busy time, man. Breakfast and gym and like, you know. Yep. Yeah, one hundred percent. Maynard, uh, how would you manage your risk? Um, if you're talking about this, so, well, I mean, just in trades in general. To be honest, like I, I um, I haven't been managing risk lately. I just been setting setting stop loss, setting partial take profits, and and take profits, and that's it. I uh, I haven't really been managing anything. And um, I've been talking about that a lot lately, and it's more so for the fact that like I'm just in the mindset of, you know, I need to trust my analysis and keep my emotions out of the trading, so. Anderson, for me, bullish on gold. Target the fair valued gap in daily. Yeah, that's cool. For me, current daily candle is bearish, so I'm not gonna be bullish on gold until price comes up to 1934.69. I also have no idea what the fair value gap in daily is, so. You want to send a chart or uh, something like that? That'd be great. But yeah, I don't see any gaps here, so I don't know uh, what you're talking about. <laughs> but that's the beautiful thing about trading is there's so many different ways to execute, be profitable, figure out targets, things like that. So if it works for you, it works for you. This is what works for me. Price action. Man, I told everyone every time, you no know, technical analysis is another thing. Okay. But risk management is full things, man. If you manage your risk, then you can consistent. If you don't, then nothing, man. Technical analysis and fundamental analysis also did not help if you have no money, money management. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so I mean, with that said too, Maynard, the way that I manage risk is I take one trade per day and I risk 1%. <laughs> That's how I manage Yeah, risk. yeah, bro. You know, you know, bro, uh, I, in January, January first week, I um, approximately 7% win and second week, 
4.5% this week 9% okay this is from consistency okay I, i took the trade and 10 pips only 10 pips 50 pips you know and if i i if i uh, know about uh, no it can go please then just i uh, no took the runners no small lot side only and stop loss was 20 pips 30 pips so on. but i when i did scalping bro uh, from my regular lot side then my favorite subject is booking profit man book profit booking yep yeah, I mean, like I always say, once it's blue, it's on you. You know, once you see blue numbers, you don't want to let them things turn yeah. red. You know, secure something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, bro, I, I, I did this from last two or three years. You know, when I saw in at the end of the month, my uh, percentage, man, I was shocked. 38%, 35%. If I uh, scalp and book every trade profit. So I, I did this last two or three years. That's what it is, man. Consistency. You got to be able to put that time in. Just like you said, last two or three years. Most people aren't willing yeah, to eat. This, most people aren't willing to I eat did not, sandwiches. I did two or not three break years. my rules, man. Never ever. Yeah. Yeah, that's key. And many times I know it can go for 50 um, uh, for example, today, man, today, today I bought gold, okay, 129 point something, and I, I knew it, man, it can uh, retest the high, okay. but, uh, you know, I just booked 10 pips, after that, it, it moves 70 pips, man, I knew it, it can go, but, you know, I did not break my rules. <laughs> yeah. That is key, that is key, <clears throat> once you have a plan, set yeah, up. yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is the key behind your success. Make your difference in this market. Where is Muhammad? Where is Jack, man? Um, I don't know. I think they they well, Jake's here. Jake's here actually. He's probably working or something. That's probably why he's got himself muted. But um, Muhammad, um, Harith, I think he. He probably caught some trades during London or something, or he'll be here around in like 10 minutes oh, yeah. <laughs> for comics open. <laughs> He's enjoying, uh, com- yeah, yeah, he, he will come for comics. <laughs> and we have no news today, man. And you, you know, today is Friday, so a little bit conscious. We have no news. Oh, yeah, yeah, clean day. No red folder. Uh, Mike. Yeah, what's up, Maurice? Yo, I'm actually happy that the first video that when someone joins your Telegram group, how to actually break down the market, is actually, I think, everything that you need. Because after watching it a few times, I've been able to break down my charts yesterday, the other day, and also today, practically in the same direction as yours. So it's, it's more of chat hours, as you said the other day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's simple. You know, people try and really overcomplicate the markets. You know, a lot of these, like, gurus and stuff out there, you know, they try and sound so sophisticated to make it seem like they have something that's, like, you know, groundbreaking. You know, it's, like, amazing. And what people don't really understand is like the simple the simple things is what works it's what's duplicatable it's what you can repeat over and over and over again but i mean like i mean i used to do all kinds of crazy shit like we used to i mean we were looking at some of the things like i have um i have these i have these fib levels i can't even remember like how to draw up a fucking fib (laughs) but if you look at this like all of this shit that's on here like this is like how I used to trade, you know? And like what's funny is like I can't even tell you how like we used to do this. But let me let me see here. Let me see if I can I think like, you know, we would take the the low and like go to the high there. And so like essentially so if this was like a resistance that formed what I would be like looking for was like a pullback into this level somewhere these purple lines and like if it pulled back into this level i would just have like i would put like a damn 
Uh, I would put a uh, like a buy limit right here, and I put a buy limit right here. And what price would do would come down. It would activate buy limit, come down, activate buy limit, come down, hit my stop loss. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god man it used to be so fucking painful but this is like i i did this because like somebody was like you know this is how you trade like i bought a i bought a mentorship and they they like called this like i can't remember what it was called like the cap zone or something like that or the golden zone or something like that and now i want to go tell that guy to fuck himself because he like caused me years of trouble trying to figure out how to trade when in reality it was so <laughs> simple <laughs> you know it was so simple but yeah i have i have all these templates in here all these templates of different things see cap yeah cap zone cap zone cap zone two yeah so you can see like yeah this shows it a little bit better which I mean, it would it would work out sometimes, but it just like it, it wasn't something that was like consistent, you know. It it wasn't like. But yeah, you can see. So like, if we if we go from the low to the high, you know, this would be this fifty percent sixty one point eight was essentially like the entry areas that we are looking for, and then I would put like stop loss down here and take profit would be up here so it's like price hasn't even reached that level how, how am i expecting it to reach that level you know it's like it was just so dumb man it was so dumb i can't even believe it like that that like people do this shit and, you know he was charging like 150 dollars a month you know to be a part of like the mentorship you know just to just for me to get screwed he trades all the time but yeah, yeah there's a time he bought a 700 pound course that's around 700 pounds that's around 800 dollars i think mind was just full of nonsense oh yeah 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 but see i mean this is like from 2020 you know i mean that's from a while ago like that, that's like right around the time that i was like getting really serious into trading and when i discovered raja and man i'll never forget man the first time i i, I discovered raja I had blown an account and I was just, I was so pissed. I, you know, I was just like, man, I'm like, I'm sick of trading. And then I found Raja, I was watching his streams and he was talking shit about other traders, you know? <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, that's how I feel right now. And that's like, kind of like, that's like, kind of like what, um, what like made it like, uh, you know, like, damn, you know, like, all right, you know, this, I relate to this guy, you know, like I hate other traders too, you know? But then, like, I saw him make, like, a couple hundred dollars in, a, in, like, a couple minutes, you know, trading GJ or something. And it was just so simple how he broke it down. And, you know, the chart was naked. It looked just like this. And I was just like, damn, dude. So so I, I showed up the next day on the stream. I um, I executed, like, when, when he, like, broke everything down. And, you know, when he uh, was talking about where he was going to execute, I executed. I took a 0.01 lot, you know, just a 0.01 lot on like a hundred dollar account. I mean, I was like, this was like at, at, the, at my breaking point of trading. I had lost so much money. I was like, I'm fucking done with it. And um, so I took a 0.01. I think I made like 70 cents, you know, but <laughs> but I was like, boom, like it just it clicked. It clicked for me. Like it made sense why he took the entry. You know, it, it made sense. Like, all right, cool. I think like I could probably do this again. You know, like, I, it, this is duplicatable, you know, so, long story short, my rant is all about, like, simple is key, something that's duplicatable, something that you can teach to other people, like, the way that I think about it is if you can explain it to somebody else, then it's something that can be done over and over and over again, like, if you can explain it to somebody else and they can understand it, then that, like, proves, like, it's, it's something that makes sense, but... But yeah, so it's just, it's just funny, like, what people do, you know, I see the marketing that people do, um, you know, around Forex stuff, and it's just terrible. I mean, they're, they're professional marketers, like, they're good at advertising and marketing. They're not good at trading, you know, so it sucks, but hopefully we'll be able to, to put more people in a position like I was in. 
Uh, let me see here though. Esther, thanks bro. Can't explain the breakout combined with demand and supply. Um... I, I don't know, man. I, I don't really understand that, Esther. <laughs> if you're referring to what I was just drawing up, don't pay attention to any of that. What you should do is come here. Come here, watch this video. How to identify where to enter a trade and how to identify tradable ranges. These two videos right here, this video and this video, both of these, just watch those and then dispute your, your charges for any type of forex guru that you paid because they all suck. <laughs> Anderson, may I join you guys? If you can find how to join us, then you can join us. How about that? Because all you need to do is look at the screen and it's going to tell you somewhere how you can join us. But you just have to find the, the key somewhere on the screen. Anderson, I'm from Philippines. Awesome. I love the Philippines, man. I love the Filipino people. I used to have 25 uh, Filipino employees, man. And they were the best freaking people ever there. They were like family. I still keep in touch with all of them. They're amazing. And they work way harder than freaking Americans work. Ungrateful ass Americans. So positive. I mean, these guys were working throughout the night for me. You know, they work from they work from 8 a.m. Eastern time, my time, to 5 p.m. Eastern time. That was literally like 11 p.m. their time to like 5 a.m. their time or some shit. You know, They're terrible hours. Terrible hours, and they loved it. We're so grateful, always in a great mood, amazing people. So shout out to your people, Anderson. Love the Filipinos. Igor, GJ rejecting now. We might have the resistance or support forming 100%. I actually do agree. What I would like to see actually is this candle close. Because with it closing rejection, no bottom wick, I think there's a very high probability that we're going to break this low, continue. And um, that's going to give us that, that pullback for the continuation. Anderson, supply and demand is same for order block. Yeah. Yeah, it's different than how I trade. Different than how I trade. I just trade a uh, basic support and resistance. Support, resistance. We just look for candle formation to see which direction we're going to go. Anderson, no problem, man. No problem. We yeah, have proven to be a, a pretty solid range here on gold. Be curious to see um, if it's just going to continue to range or what's going to happen here. GJ looks like it's going to make a little pullback for us. Oh, oh. shit. <laughs> What's good, Jake? Welcome back. Yeah, what it do? How's it going, man? It's been a while. Have a good, uh, have a good little holiday season there. Yeah, I mean, you know, my dogs pulled it in, so I just had to. Yeah. <laughs> take a sabbatical. Yeah, man, I I can't believe it. They put that ass whooping on TCU too, man. <laughs> Holy. It's like a video game. Yeah. Like NCAA. Yeah, yeah. It's like when I used to play Madden, and I used to change the opponent, the uh, the computer, to like, you know. Oh, Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, holy. Brutal. We deserve it after that heart attack on the Ohio State game. Legit, man. I mean, that was perfect too. You know, I mean, we're. I was over at my buddy's house, you know, for New Year's. We were mm -hmm. watching the game. And everybody's like, fuck, man. You know, we see we see Ohio State lineup for the field goal. I'm like, fuck, yeah, man, it's dude. over, oh you know? It's over. 
And then all of a sudden, the <laughs> the ball drops, New Year's hits, and boom, they miss the field goal. I'm like, Dude, everybody's like cheersing, crazy. you know, like because the ball dropped. And then like my one homie is like, they missed. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. It was literally like 12 one It was crazy. Oh my god. Yeah, I couldn't but believe it. That's football. Yeah, that was pretty wild. I mean... I'm not gonna lie, like it, it, it almost seems scripted because of how it played out, you know? It's like, Jesus. Yeah, it was perfect. Perfect, perfect. You, um, you been doing any trading lately? We're just getting back no, to it. No, it's that. I've been sick. I've been sick for a while. Like, a, I mean, I'm better now, but I've only been better for like a couple days. Um,. But yeah, I'm definitely back in it, uh, Monday. Word. Word. <laughs> yeah, I had a little... I've been looking, though. I've been watching all yours. I've been watching all your streams at night. Oh, word. To recap. Hell yeah. Yeah, we had a... I had a really good start to the year, man. I'm, I'm like, feeling bullet. Yeah, though. definitely. My ego's getting a little ahead of me. I had... had definitely. Been, had, like, two dumbass trades. Like, today I got lucky, but it was, like... FOMO like impulse trade here right here you know I just opened a chart I kind of seen it happening and I was like oh shit yeah this looks good and then I like I entered and then I'm like measured out the range to the bottom here and I was like fuck man that's not that's not a very big range and I almost closed it but then I was just like ah we'll see if it's gonna give me 10 pips so I just set my full TP like right at the uh, 10 pip 10 pip mark just to get out of it so I got lucky there. Yesterday, kind of similar thing. Took like a risky impulse entry, but yeah, still that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's um, I don't know. I'm trying to be a little <laughs> bit more cautious now because seems like that's just thing got to do with gold, though. Yeah, yeah. You just it's very intuitive. You know, you just kind of like you're either like, like on the train or you're not. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah, and that's kind of what I was thinking yesterday, but I mean the analysis like everything everything was correct You know, I took the took the entry right here on this bearish one um, mm -hmm. As it broke the high, but what I what I realized and Gotta yeah, look at the trade right after it though. That, well, that's right the thing. After, that's right what, after the wick when that, it flips Yep, and that's that's what I realized is like this is like the candle like if I was gonna look for the impulse trade I should have executed on this candle because you know, if you think about it, price price came down here, it broke the bottom, and then it went up to break the high. So, like, after it does that, the probability of it coming back down is very low. Which, as you can see, like, it did retrace, but that this was news. News came out, and this, this made a strong push down. But it never broke the low, you know, and it ended up pushing yeah. up, so it was perfect. But, and it's funny because that's the same exact thing that I did... Right here, like this, there was a. Uh, let's see, there was a. I had a resistance marked up like here, and I saw this candle right here, like breaking out and reject. And so I was like, all right, cool. This next candle is probably gonna break the low and come retest this level. But it broke the low and then went up and broke the high. And I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna take the buy when it breaks the high if it does break the high because to me that's telling me that it's a volatile candle there should be enough volume in the market to give me a push and as you can see you know it did that so I'm happy that I took that loss yesterday the way it did because it just solidified that like if I'm gonna take an impulse entry uh, breaking out of a range then I need to wait for the lows to break and then the highs to break on a bullish move and vice versa on a bearish move mm -hmm. because that's like that's like telling me that it's a volatile candle there's volume in the market so it's it's gonna have enough volume to push out of the range you know it's not gonna close back in it but that's so kind you of wouldn't wait for that closure yeah. then well not in that case I think that that gives me a that gives me an opportunity to take the the impulse trade because just like you said sometimes you you know with gold you you sometimes you're either on the, the the train or you're not you know so yeah I just personally like I really I don't disagree with that at all but I do like to I love waiting for that wick and then the flip. Yeah, yeah. No, that would have been that would have been. I can. Perfect. Yeah. But that's that's ultimately like why I was looking at this trade because, or why I took this trade because when I opened up, 
the charts you know I saw that like this candle had kind of done exactly that it broke the highs and then like barely broke the lows you know but this current one like wicked up and then was coming down but what I was really looking at was that it was doing what I'm talking about on the hourly it broke the highs and it was breaking the lows mm -hmm. and then the four hour it was flipping bearish to come down and break the low so I was like all right and then I just was like bye you know and then I was like wait a second this range looks pretty small then I measured it up and I was like, oh fuck, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's small. Yeah. <laughs> also, that zone looks pretty, pretty strong with that, that big wick rejection there on that bullish candle in the middle. Yeah, yeah. So I got a, um, I got a little, uh, I got a little lucky with that one. But so we'll take it's it, okay. we'll take it's it, we'll run with it, and I'm not gonna do that again. I'll be a little bit more cautious next time. <laughs> Yeah, but I like how you're kind of maining gold. Yeah, it's, it's one um, of those things that, like, if you put the time in, it could pay off. Yeah, yeah, and I'm, well, and honestly, like, I'm, I'm starting to realize, like, I mean, obviously, GJ's moving fucking great right now, but, I mean, the yeah, optimal, but... the optimal entry was, like, London, you know, London Open here. And, like, after that, there really hasn't been a clear entry that I would have personally executed on. Um, so... With that said, like that's what I've been starting to notice is like GJ, while it does move very nice, it moves very nice during London session, not necessarily New York session. Um, yeah, whereas, I really hope this year's the the New York year. Yeah, because I mean we've been we've been seeing some <laughs> we pretty nice something. moves on New York session with gold. Yeah, definitely with gold. But, but also like, do you think the fact that do you think um. The fact that gold's pretty much just been going up, you think that has anything to do with it? Like, you've yeah. only been taking buys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so based on that too, I've I've really like I've started to realize that what I need to do is only trade in the direction of the daily candle. So that's like been my my real main focus yeah. as far as like direction. Um, so like you know, I've I was only looking for sells on gold because the bear you know we're bearish, and and less price came up and flip bullish and in that case you know the buys like to me only made sense above 1934 on the 30 minute because of the ranges you know there wasn't really enough ranges like based on the daily candle flipping but um but yeah so i mean to answer that question like yeah it has been a lot of a lot of buys but mainly because it's just been a lot of daily bullish candles yeah i expect a fight right here i mean it has been pretty rangy but definitely a fight between the bears and the bulls at this critical level here just scroll out on the daily i mean it's a it's a tough level it's got all that momentum but there's definitely going to be some sell orders placed yep yeah so I, I expect a little range here for a minute yeah there's a lot of traffic back here this was this was like around the time that um Ukraine was getting <clears throat> invaded, I think, too. Yeah. Yeah, just because it's Charlotte, gotta know, know the macro picture. If it's just pulling and pulling, it's like, yeah, jump on. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think, I think in general, I think like, to your point, you know, like overall, like buys on gold is probably. A little bit more higher probability in general just because you know it's i mean gold like traditionally on the bigger picture is always going up you know yeah um, like it's you know obviously it's it's had higher highs you know and if you look at like huge picture you know it's it's not really like creating new highs but at the same time it is I'm just gonna look at the housing. I mean, not the housing. The uh, just the U.S. dollar. Yeah. We're still getting hit with rate hikes. Like, gold's gonna be shining for a minute. Yeah. Even if it has its dips. Yeah, and things at that, aren't... At that point, they're just corrections in this market. Yeah, and things aren't really looking too good for for the U.S. dollar for the near future. Yeah, so I'm, I'm still probably just buy bias. 
I mean, I am waiting for this huge correction though, like down to like 1860 or 50 or something. Yeah, we did have really strong push like towards the end of December, and it really hasn't moved moved bearish since then. Yeah, I think it's due. People are gonna be pulling out their orders. See, do we have any trade right now? Nothing. Nothing nope. in my opinion. Yeah, I wouldn't force any of this. Yeah, it's becoming a no trade zone. No trade range. Yeah, Anderson, uh, in the YouTube chat, yeah, it's free. Yeah, if you see, the reason I was saying that is because there's a damn, there's a ticker scrolling on the bottom of the screen. It says free Forex Telegram community. <laughs> Join that. Zoom link's in there. Boom. So I did see, so like I said, I've seen, I think most of your trades, if not like all of them for this year. So there were a few things, or there's really just one thing that I didn't really disagree, I, I didn't really agree with, but I wanted to ask why you did it in case like you have another perspective. So I think it was like Friday, your Friday trade like last a week ago. Yeah. And I think there might have been like another one this week. But basically it was like it, it was like your stop loss was say like 40 pips and then you pulled out after like 10 pips. Yeah. So are you are you still pulling out 90? So I've um lately I've just been closing everything um just because of like I've been I've been um you know since I've been trading gold like I've noticed like a lot of times what will happen is like even when price will continue you know if I secure 10 pips it'll likely like reject down to my entry like it's it's like very rare that it'll just continue pushing you know like it'll make like a nice push I can secure and then it'll like reject down so yeah I've honestly just been you know just closing the full position at 10 pips just to maximize like the amount of profits that I'm securing because um i'm also like not really managing risk on the flip side you know i've just been setting like stop loss setting take profit level at 10 11 12 pips and um just like letting it rock you know whatever happens happens so like that's um the reason that i've been so to go back on why i've just been securing at like 10 11 pips a full position is because i'm not really managing risk on the back side so i want to maximize the amount of profits that i'm I'm taking so that way when I do take a loss it's not gonna wipe out all my profits you know so that for that though that means you basically have to be winning at least four times more than you're losing yeah yeah so like right now you know like the run is like 11 and 2 or something you know mm -hmm. so the profit so far on the year I'm obviously profitable um, but like that loss that I took yesterday, it took out it took out Wednesday's profits and Tuesday's profits. So, mm. you know, not too bad, but yeah, you're you're right. You know, my losses are bigger than my wins right now, 100%. Yeah, I guess it's just not really my style. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of it's like the reason that I'm I'm doing that honestly is because. Like I was like kind of hitting my confidence, you know, I was like, I, I was like becoming unconfident because I was, I was losing a lot of trades like December, November, things like that. I mean, but it was because I was managing risk and I was closing positions early and then price would go in my favor and I would have been able to secure 10 pips, you know? So mm. at the start of this year, that's when I was like, all right, cool. I'm going to try this. I'm not going to fucking secure anything. Um, or I mean, I'm not going to manage risk and I'm just going to secure at 10, 11, 12 pips. As long as my stop loss is in a valid area, it shouldn't get hit, you know? 
um, as yeah. long as if, if my analysis is correct. So, and I mean, I think it's proving itself right, at least as far as like how far this, how, how this year has gone so far. Um, because there's been like situations where the other Jake uh, has been on here. Price went against us. You know, he closed. I didn't. And I was under, I ended up closing in profit, you know, like my stop yeah. loss was never hit because it was in a valid area. So that's what I, I guess like, so in a, if you think about it too, like Raja, like I remember when I first um, started following him, he was kind of in that position. He would set a stop loss, wouldn't really manage risk. And he would always close t at 10, 11 pips full position. And then, you know, we, we went through a phase where we saw Raja starting to manage risk, you know, like. He would also close at 10 11 12 pips or so but at the same time he was managing risk um, as price would go against him and now you know he's in that phase of like he manages risk but at the same time he holds trades for 50 60 70 pips you know like he's more confident in the setups so like i think i'm in that that like stage where it's like all right i, I need to become like really confident in the setups and my ability to be profitable and then I'll move into the next stage of how can I ma make my, my losses less than my wins, you know what I mean? So you're kind of looking at it as, as like a stage in progression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and like I said, it was simply for the fact that like, I you know, for me, like I, I, I'm like comfortable emotionally, like mentally with taking one trade a day. Like after that, I feel like my, my shit like kind of gets out of whack, you know, I start to see like buys and sells types of thing. Um, whereas Raja, like I, what I've started to notice with him is he will take, you know, two or three trades, but he won't exceed a certain amount of risk. So he's like exiting a trade early to maintain risk for another position, you know, maybe a potential better entry. Whereas like me mentally, I don't really want to take another entry. You know, if my, if my trade's going to be a loss, I don't want to compound that loss. So I'm comfortable with losing 1%, you know, per day. Like that's like my my max risk you know so I've, I've like come to the conclusion that like right now i'd rather focus on like profitable setups and you know just like trusting my analysis once we're good with that then i'm then i know i'm going to be able to be confident in my analysis and i'll notice things like yesterday and gold um you know it didn't move very quick you know so that's like one of those things where i need to put that in my pocket like okay cool if price doesn't like move very quick then gold doesn't have the volume to take me to my profit level so that's like a situation where i probably want to manage risk things like that so yeah i mean to your point you know it's just kind of like uh chapters you know chapters in the trading journey you know yeah i feel that to get your confidence up yeah. hit some tps yeah, and I mean it's exactly that, you know. If I like, I look at my my MetaTrader account for this year, it's fucking all blue except for two red numbers. Yeah, it's you know? a good feeling. So, yeah, exactly. So like, I, like I feel unstoppable, you know. So, um, so yeah, I mean to your point, you know, it's like I, I just kind of like hit a point where I was just like, fuck, man, I need to, I need to maybe like take a step back and build that confidence up towards the winning setups because i like it for some reason like and it might have just been like the end of the year you know volume dying out whatever the case might be but um i stopped trading like december 19th that's that's like when i took my last trade and um you know i was just like reviewing like the trades i took in december the trades i took in november i was just like fuck man you know there's a lot of red numbers here you know like i was still profitable but I'm just like, damn, you know, and like, then I started to look at the analysis that I had in my trading journal for those losses. And I'm like, fuck, you know, like most of these like actually would have been profitable, you know, so I just need to start trusting my, my stop loss level, you know, and not let the emotions get in the way. Yeah, I guess, um, I guess managing risk is pretty like an advanced thing. Yeah kind of might have been like jumping the gun i mean for me i'm just thinking about me right now like because I, I, I do manage risk but it's also like i run into the same problem where like i manage the risk and then it hits my tp exactly yeah yeah and to your point you know it's like it's it's more of an advanced thing and i think like if and what i started to realize too is i just kind of th started to look at raja's journey at, on a big picture you know it's like I, I remember him saying i believe it was at the start of 2021 this year is about managing risk 
And like, yep, I remember that. And and then um, then at the start of 22, it was like this year is about holding positions, you know. Yeah. And so it's like it's always like this, like all right, what's the next level, you know? So that's like you know when this year started, I was like, all right, this year is about securing at 10, 11, 12 pips, full position, trusting my stop loss, you know. Um, kind of what Don does, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah, because somebody actually mentioned that they DM me on Twitter the other day, and um, they were like trying to like talk me out of my my strategy. <laughs> Honestly, you know, they were like, "Bro, like with how you trade, like you have to win more than you lose." And I'm like, "Yeah, I mean, absolutely." You know, I'm, and you know, I was just like, "I'm ten and one right now," you know, so I'm winning more than I'm losing, you know, and. Yeah. Um, and so anyways anyways he um he was saying like you know don had taken like two losses back to back in a stream or something and it took out all the profits for the month and i was like that's what i'm not going to do i'm only going to take one loss <laughs> you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put myself into that mental like handicap of taking two losses but yeah i think you're right because that's what that dude had said he said like they both hit full stop loss or something you know yeah i'm pretty sure that's what he does but yeah i've never seen him so i don't know I've just seen his twitter maurice were you uh were you gonna say something about this right here uh no i was saying provided you, you, you're getting your blues at the end of the day you really don't care what another person is saying yeah 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 that's true that's true i thought you were gonna say something about this uh this gold right here because um remember if this is what i this is what we were, we like kind of came to the conclusion of what would be a valid yeah, impulse i kind of like situation. i kind of like sells here soon if it closes below yeah 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 and if you think about it i actually think the impulse situation makes sense here at the break of these 30 minute lows we've already broken the 30 minute high so mm -hmm. to me that shows like a volatile candle there's going to be volume in the market also if you look at the time it's 8 19 we have comex open happening at one minute if it breaks these lows, the combination of the volume from the volatile candle and the volume from Comex should dish out like 10 pips. You know, it should give enough to, to break out of this range. But if you don't want to execute on it, fine. I'm not going to, by the way. I already took my trade. But I'm just mentioning this so like we can see if this is going to actually give us that 10 pips or, or what. Cause that's Pretty good market structure too. Yeah, yeah. So, and if you look at four hour too, this goes right alongside of what we were talking about earlier, where the four hour candle could break its low, have a nice wick fill, and it's the last 40 minutes in the four hour candle. Most of the time, there's more volati volatility at the beginning of a four hour candle and at the end of a four hour candle. So we'll have to see what happens here. So more like a breakout, but not like a break and a close, just a break of that. Uh, support level so that for yeah. The sets. yeah like what 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 i would anticipate to happen is if it does break that low like pretty strong you know based on how mm -hmm. i always talk about like with the with the um the spread breaking the low you know that's gonna be like a nice one to two one to two pip break you know so if it does like break that low there it, sh it will probably just drive down being that the time because it's you know we're in a we're in a high volume time right now yeah, well, 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 I'm just happy that that also my analysis is actually playing out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Still a yeah, 100 percent. But nonetheless, uh, just like Jake was saying, the better confirmation, especially since there's only like eight minutes left in this uh, 30 minute candle, would be if it if it can close below that uh, 1926.35, that would be the better confirmation for sure. But yeah, I, but I think this is aligning with that um, that uh, that impulse situation that we were talking about. Yeah. Anderson, did you know ICT? No, I don't know ICT. <laughs> Dan FX, I'm like, what's happening, Dan? How you doing? That's good. Good point of view. Thanks for the insight. No problem. Igor on 30 minute, Raja was saying if it breaks the low like now in the first five minutes, it's risky, but if it breaks after that, there is more chances to go bearish. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. 
But honestly, I would have anticipated it to already break and continue with the Comex open at 820 and it's two minutes past that and it's already kind of rejecting that area. So it doesn't look like that's going to be the volume to get it out of there. Yeah, we'll have to see there. We'll have to see if it if it does break that low. But I mean, at this point, you know, like like I was saying, you know, it's, it's seven eight minutes left in this thirty minute candle. It would be better to just wait and see if it's gonna close below that nineteen twenty six thirty five level. Yeah. Especially with how it's rejecting. chance not a chance breaking the high well it was it was looking to break the highs and the low on the hourly too that would have been nice would have done that on hourly and 30 minute I definitely think but looks like comics is gonna push that thing the other way yeah well now it looks good for buys so <laughs> And that, my friend, is why I have been trading in the daily candle direction, is because it keeps my, my bias one way. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely good thing. thing. Yeah, this 1926 level proven to be pretty strong. 
Hell yeah, a lot, yeah, a lot of, of wicks. Hey Mike bro. What's good with it, Sartaz? Uh nothing bro, I bought a comic comic. Ten pips, twelve pips. To go buy on gold? Gold. Yeah yeah. Would you execute on like five minutes or something? Right here? Yeah yeah, yeah. based on based on Muhammad strategy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay bro, see you on Monday. I am a little bit sick, so Sounds good man, rest up. Have a good weekend. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, man. Thank you. Happen uh, weekend. Yes, sir. Happy weekend. Happy weekend. Bye, bye. Adios. Peace. Ciao, ciao. Go soon. We gotta go visit this house we bought. Ends up having a gigantic sinkhole in the backyard. Oh, that ain't good. Yeah, I got a um, I'm like helping out a friend right now, um, build out like his sales team. So, yeah, I got a uh, like a 9 a.m. meeting every day now that I gotta hop on. So I, I've been having to shut down the streams a little bit earlier. Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, well trading's, trading's flexible, flexible, which is good. Yep, <laughs> yep. Yeah, and I can have it open in, in my, my other screen if I need to <laughs> on the meeting, so it's all good. Just do it anywhere. Yep. Yeah, this is uh, it's troublesome here on gold though at this point. I mean, need that, need that break and close somewhere. It's like a big no trade range for me. GJ is still no resistance. Yeah, I mean, four hour should tell you to just close the charts. Yep. Although daily looks really good, but still, you want some confirmation on the four hour break above like 1930 close. I mean. Yeah, and Friday, you know, as we as we know can be a trap mm. day yeah Friday's interesting no news today either so who knows you know I say all this and you know we could see like a 300 pip move at like 1 p.m. today <laughs> could seems, seems to always happen, happen. <laughs> I buy gold in five minute target 50 pips yeah, I don't know about that, but if it works, it works. I don't know where where the entry would be. But yeah, either way, 50 pips. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of five-minute candles print, and it hasn't moved 50 pips throughout any of those. So pretty risky, and it's having a very very strong push to the south end right now. So. Some crazy momentum kicking in. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh this is when I stay away. 
But yeah, I mean this this actually I missed mean, that that same impulse entry criteria based on the hourly here too. Already broke the highs. Go break the lows. Break these lows. Continue. That's also gonna be the four hour lows too. Four hour lows. Could work, could work. Oh my god, I have a question. On the 30 minutes, will that new candle need to break the previous high first? And then break the low? For for the for the impulse criteria that I've been talking about, yeah, that's what I would want to see, but I mean that already happened on the hourly. It already broke that high, so I mean you could you could you could probably trade it based on that. But if you do that then you know you would want the Yeah, you would want the start loss below. Or above, yeah. I mean. So it's um, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a little tricky here, simply because this area is here, and these candles really haven't uh -huh. made it even that far. So it's yeah. a little tricky, in my opinion. Like if we if we had like a wick, you know, recent in a recent history that was like down here or something. Mm -hmm. you know, I think it would I think I would feel a little bit better about doing something like that like if this if this uh, this 30 minute wick was like down here a little bit lower that would, yeah. that would be perfect because then it would be like 30 minute hourly and four hour lows all breaking at the same time plus the daily candles bearish all like daily four hour one hour 30 minute they would all be bearish and breaking the lows so it, it would be that would be like you know a little bit stronger confirmation but with the way it like looks currently it's, mm -hmm. it's just it's showing to me like that 1926 level is really strong so you probably want to see that closure below just to be extra safe or well, if there's wicks we're going in the other direction yeah that too that too but i mean to that point too i mean the, the small wicks on the top side like I think that's like a little bit better, but yeah, I mean, if the wicks were going in the other direction, that would be really solid. And that's that's like kind of why I took the trade here because there were strong rejections, you know, and then we broke the lows, so it made sense. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, so I mean, just like just like we always say, you know, wicks wicks tell us two story, one of two stories. One, it's a rejection, or two, it's going to be a wick fill. And you know the, the the criteria behind that, you know what I would say, is that if price is creating a wick, but it's failing to close below a zone, then it's a rejection. It's a rejection candle. If it's closing below the zone, and it's got the wick, then it's a wick fill. So if this is a good example, this wick right here, this is a rejection wick, but. If this candle had closed uh, something like this, let me get my tool here. If this candle closed something like this, I would say mm -hmm. that's a that's a wick fill candle, mm -hmm. and we can anticipate price to continue going bullish because this candle was able to do something that none of these candles were able to do. Yeah, set a target. Well, that's a wick fill. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's gonna tell me that the next candle has a high probability to fill this here and continue uh -huh. to the zone. God damn, it's breaking to the downside. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all intuition, you know. It's um, you know, if you think about the time, 8:30 a.m. You know, we're in, we're right in the heat of uh, high volume for the for the NY session. You know, I, like I definitely see how this could have been valid, and who knows? Had I not taken the trade earlier, I might have executed on this. But it's just—it's really just intuition, you know. It looks like it would have dished out 10 pips, so. Yeah, but this is—it's breaking right now. That um, that uh, support for those for those mid who want to get in, they should like wait for a body close, right? Yeah. They can like wait. Rather yeah. than because based on impulse it has not taken out the, the previous high the previous candle high yeah 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 and like i said you know it did it on the hourly so you could take that into consideration and you could trade mm -hmm. it based on the hourly with that same structure but to me it just it makes more sense to wait for the the close below 
because I like I really yeah. like to take entries on the 30 minutes. So if I would have liked, if I would have been looking to take this, I would have wanted exactly what you said: the high to break over here, and then come down, break these lows. Then I'd be like, all right, cool. I think we could probably do this, but you know, it's uh, yeah. Maybe because you don't have that one, just wait for that candle kind of close below that support level. Yeah. Below like on the 30 minute. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, and with the way it's rejecting, you know, like that's kind of the thing is, you know, you don't really want to be involved in that. <laughs> yeah. Or at least I don't. But we're guys. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna shut it down. That's what I would wait for on gold. I mean, that impulse criteria would have would have worked out though. Um, it definitely yeah. it definitely yielded ten pips. Um, and you could have, like I said, could have traded it based off the hourly. Well, it just yielded barely 10 pips, so who knows. But stops would have been like 30 pips or so. It's not too bad. But I mean, I think, like, the story, in my opinion, like, I think it makes sense. It's just a, it's a little risky, and I think the better entry would be to wait for that 30 minute to close below that zone. But if you think it's about it, above. yeah, if yeah. you think about it, daily is bearish, so that's giving us nice daily, I mean, uh, bearish confirmation. 4-hour four, four already wicked up and is breaking a low and it's only 20 minutes left in the 4-hour candle so the probability of it flipping and closing bullish is probably very low the hourly you know broke the high and the lows so it's given that that, uh, that impulse like kind of confirmation and the 30 minute you know just drove down really strong so I mean I think it makes sense but it's like I said the better opportunity I think would be to wait for the candle to close and but you but with that said you would have to accept that there is also a probability that it could just drive through this range and you missed a trade so that's how it goes and gj is still no resistance so nothing on gj nope just close your charts yep 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 shut it down have a good weekend um and don't put yourself into a position to where you're pissed off throughout the weekend because you you lost money. Take it easy, man. All right, peace out, guys. Peace out. We'll catch you guys you Monday. Bro. Have an amazing yeah, weekend. Yeah. Yes, you all. Peace out, peace out. Adios, YouTube. Peace out. See you all Monday. And if you caught this, congrats, because it looks like it's going to play out. <laughs>